everyone, it's Joey with Titan Tech, and today we're going to be going through the next section of R for Data Science and rebuilding the code with Elixir. So we're still on chapter three, uh, which is the data visualization chapter, and we're going through the second section, which uh, they have as first steps. So before we dive into the code, I want to give you a heads up. So we're going to be using the uh, miles per gallon data set that they've got right here. And so I want to let you know here's a couple of links of where you can go to find all the R for uh, all the data sets you'll need for R for data science. So the first link uh, I'll take you over here. So this is just a uh, not I don't know if it's quite comprehensive but a, a significant list of many many of the data sets used in the various R packages. But today here's the link to the actual miles per gallon data set that we're going to be using. And it's got a you know a little description. It's got you know the fields that are actually in the data set and little descriptions of each field, so you know what each each thing does and what it covers. Uh, I'll put the links in the description box below with anything else I mention. Um, so with that, let's get started. So what we need to first do is okay. I've gone ahead and saved off that miles per gallon uh, CSV data set. So I need to find where it is in my machine. So let's start. By, okay, to find the root. This uh, I'm just trying to find the current working directory, and so if we do that. Okay, looks good. Then let's find where is the file located. Uh, do this file equals, or I should file path equals. Let's see, uh, backslash. Documents are for data science, data and mpg.csv. Okay, that looks good. <clears throat> and then the last thing, let's just go ahead and combine it together. So we're going to concatenate, uh, meaning join those two strings together with this, uh, with the less than greater than symbols okay so this is this is what we want so this is where I've saved it save it wherever it is uh, that makes sense for you on your machine but this is the file path you're going to need because we're going to pass it into explore which we we aliased right if I go back up in the previous video we went ahead and aliased that and loaded it in in, in our setup so now let's just go ahead and let's try and read it in. Okay, so reading it in, let's see, data frame dot, oh, from CSV. And see, look, it's looking for a file name, so we're gonna pass the path mpg file. Perfect. Okay, so this is what we want. So now we're gonna save that, no. Save that as mpg, awesome. Okay, so so let's see. So th that's what they've done in the first step here in R for Data Science. Yeah, we just want to be able to see the data frame, which is what we've got here. Yep, and you can see manufacturer, model, display, manufacturer, model, or, or uh, displacement, displacement. Okay, so we're good there. Now in the next section, they talk about um, creating a plot. Ah. Okay, so I actually had some code here, but we don't need this. Let's delete this. So we're going to use these new, uh, this new capability or relatively new capability in LiveBook called Smart Cells. And so we're just trying to create a simple scatter plot using Vega Light. Again, we already loaded that in the last video. Um, and these Smart Cells, where we put displacement on the x-axis and the highway miles per gallon on the y-axis. So let's try that. Let me give myself a little more space. Okay, click Smart. Uh, chart. Here we go. So notice something that happened right here. Right? We got data. Look, it already recognized that our miles per gallon data set works with this smart cell. So it automatically loaded that. And if you had more than one, it'll load a whole list of them and you know pick one. But that way you um, it, it's just, it's, it's real nice. It's a nicety to, to get working, uh, with, with these data sets. 
All right, so what do we want? So we want displacement on the x-axis and we wanted highway on the y-axis. So let's see, these are both numeric. So let's make their quantitative. Quantitative. Uh, notice, notice there's a couple of different options. This, these are options from Vega Light. Uh, quantitative, basically numeric. Uh, nominal will be categorical. Um, I forget what ordinal is. Temporal would be for time. So we want quantitative. Uh, we're not aggregating. And we'll make it say 400. Let's, let's try that. Evaluate. Yes. So check that out. Look at that. We didn't have to write a single piece of code, but yet using these smart cells, we were able to generate a nice graphic, uh, basically the same one we've got here. Um, without having to do any code. And, and a cool little bonus thing is on these smart cells, you can hit this toggle source. And look at that, it generates the code for you. So now you've got something to work from and you can start, you can start customizing it as you, as you wish. All right, anyway, back to this. Okay, so that was, so we made the graphic. We created uh, what they had here in ggplot. Um, let's keep going. Yep, and this, so this is specific to R, so if you're an R guy, you know, and using ggplot, that's not for us in Vega Lite. Okay, now let's move on to the exercises. All right, so let's start working through the first one. Okay, so if we just run, if we just create it where we just specify the data set, what do we actually see? Okay, so this I'm, I'm actually going to type out. We'll do, we'll give it a width of 400. And then we're gonna do data from values. So this is how we can pass that miles per gallon data set here. And then let's just do, and we're just gonna say it's a bar. Uh, oh, sorry, point. Yep, so really not, now, if we truly did just, oh, just pass the data, so Vega Light would scream at you and say, oh, you know, you have to pass a mark. You have to see uh, what type of chart it's gonna be. So if we do that, yeah, that's, that's, that's what we get. Okay, so that was question one. Let's go to question two. How many rows are in the miles per gallon data set and how many columns? Perfect. So all we have to do is just give it in. So our data frame, here we go. So our data frame, you can see, already gives us this high level summary information, right? So it's got 234 rows, rows comes first, then comes columns. So we have 234 rows and 12 columns. Easy enough. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, what does the DRV variable describe? Okay, so I've gone ahead and said what it is here, but again, this description uh, can be found over at this link that, again, I'll put it in the description box below. But basically, right, CRD, DRV is the type of drivetrain where F is the front wheel drive, R is real wheel drive, and four is a four wheel drive, okay? Okay, make a scatter plot of highway versus cylinder, perfect. So we're gonna use our smart cell again. Make this nice and easy. So we'll do highway <clears throat> and cylinder. Okay, cylinder would be nominal, right? So cylinder is gonna be a category. There's only uh, a few different types of cylinders in here. Let's actually run it. Perfect. Yep, that makes sense. So we're showing a quantitative here, a cylinder, or a nominal here. Easy, easy. I love it. Okay. So now for the final question, what happens if you make a scatter plot of class versus drive? Well, let's try it. Again, we'll do our smart cells, chart. Where's class? Here we go, class versus drivetrain. So I believe class is nominal and drivetrain is nominal. Let's evaluate. 
Oh, and uh, yeah, so just with points, it looks like this, but I actually like this better with a bar chart. There we go. Cool. Yeah, so that's that's all there is for this section. Nice and simple, easy, easy to get going. In the next section, we're going to start really working into um, what they call aesthetic mappings or in Vega Light, what they have as marks, right? Where we start on understanding, uh, or, or, or sorry, not just marks, but how we can map data to different variables, you know, size, color, um, as well as X and Y dimensions, right? And, and some others. So, you know, I hope this piqued your interest. You know, if you're interested, uh, follow us on the next one. If, if this is helpful, please like and subscribe. If you got comments or there's something specific you want to see again let us know in the comments below happy to happy to take requests and and you know see what's what's helpful for you guys so with that thanks so much guys you know we'll see you in the next one have a great day bye